When it comes to how we observe, how we analyze, how we critique NBA superstars, it works in a few different phases. So the first phase is obviously when they first come onto the scene and it's the honeymoon phase basically. Everything is great, a player can do no wrong because we're just so excited to see what they can do. We're just so appreciative of it. There are little standards to be met. It's just about you going out and showing us what you can do and us just being absolutely amazed by it. Then moves into another phase where, okay, there starts to be a bit of championship expectations, if not a lot of championship expectations. And we see a lot of the current stars in the NBA, sort of, if they're not already there, they're definitely reaching that point. Think Tatum, think Embiid, think Luka, Booker. And then it becomes, okay, we know you're talented, but can you use that talent to win the ultimate thing, right? Because that's the ultimate test for any NBA player. It's the ultimate test for any athlete. Can you use your skills to win a championship? And within that phase comes a lot of criticism until you ultimately get it done. But then there's this other phase that comes usually when a guy wins the championship where, for lack of a better term, I'll just straight up call it what it is. It's the stage where we start to take them for granted because the intense microscope that we had on them while sort of pressuring them to win a championship ultimately goes away because you've done it. So now it's like, oh, okay, you've done it. We know you can do it. Now we're gonna move that microscope onto the next guy, the next coming stars um, who we think should be good enough to win a championship. And so when the microscope moves off that guy, then, you know, they're just kind of there. It's not necessarily that we don't notice them or that we don't say, hey, this guy is still great, but I don't think we appreciate them as much as we should. I think the best example anyone can give is LeBron James where, 27 points, seven rebounds, seven assists was just penciled in on a nightly basis at a certain point, certainly after he won his first championship in Miami. And whereas at first, you know, we used to be really wowed by his all around excellence, it just became standard, par for the course. And the reason I bring this up is because I think that's a lot of what's going on with Nikola Jokic now. Follow the three-step arc. He comes into the league, he starts putting up near triple-double numbers. Wow, this center is insane. Like a point center, he's probably the best passing big man of all time. This is insane. But then, as we saw over the last few years, it's been about, wow, he's winning MVPs, but he's not winning a championship. Can he really be that guy? I don't know, it doesn't look so. But now that he's won that championship, every insane thing that he does is just sort of, you know, seamlessly, melted into the fabric of your average NBA night. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. That's just sort of the nature of how our minds work, right? We always wanna focus on the shiny new thing because that's the thing we haven't seen before. It's the thing that brings us the most excitement, the thing that's most unexpected. But the reason I think it's important to bring up in terms of Nikola Jokic is because we really shouldn't take this guy for granted because what this guy is doing right now is some of the most insane stuff you will ever see on a basketball court. And the way I can prove that is through three very simple numbers. It's very impressive to lead the NBA in a single category over the course of an entire season. But it's points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, etc. It's insanely impressive that out of all the NBA players in the league right now, you are the best that season at one specific thing, right? That's insane to be that elite at one specific skill. To do it at two things is beyond insane. I know Russell Westbrook and James Harden have led the league in points and assists in different seasons. I don't know if they've ever both done it in the same season. But then to lead the league in three categories at the same time is literally unheard of. And that's what Nikola Jokic is doing. And it's not just any three categories. It is the big three of statistical categories. He is leading the NBA in total points, total rebounds, and total assists. What? How? Why? How? I don't get it. We see it a lot where guys win championships and take it up a level just because the knowledge and the IQ and also the confidence you gain from winning a championship just unlocks an entire different plane of basketball greatness. We saw it with LeBron in 2013. We saw it with Steph in 2016. I remember oddly enough, the 2020 Raptors were a pretty good example of this despite losing Kawhi and Danny Green. They were still really, really good. And we're seeing it with Jokic and it's just, I remember when LeBron was like in his late Cleveland, early Miami days, it was like, oh my God, like the near triple double, that's insane. But in a way it kind of made sense that LeBron was the guy to do it because he was like this physical freak and like small forward is sort of like the middle ground between all the positions. So it kind of makes sense that he could do everything. Then Russell Westbrook started putting up tri triple doubles as a point guard, which didn't really make much sense, but also kind of did because obviously, you know, the points and the stuff and then the rebounds. Yeah, he's only 6'3", but he's super athletic and he's super relentless. So like in a way we, we were sort of able to justify this, but like what Jokic is doing right now, it's just for Jokic to do what he's doing, it just sort of feels like the next evolution of the game of basketball where we see a lot of guys a lot of big men become the hubs of their offense and really play point centers but even then it's still just hard to wrap my head around this idea that this guy this seven footer this lumbering seven footer 
is averaging almost 30 points a game, almost 13 rebounds, almost 10 assists. Oh, and by the way, he's doing it on 57% shooting from the field. That's the incredible part. He's doing this insanely efficiently. We obviously don't know if this stuff is gonna hold up over the course of an entire season. And in fact, that's part of why Jokic leads the league in these numbers is because he's played the most games. It's, it's the total stuff is more of a durability thing or the total stuff factors in durability and not just per game averages, uh, which is what, for whatever reason, we care more about. I guess my overall point is that, yeah, while we focus on, okay, can this guy win their first championship? I think it's important for us to not forget about the guys who have already done it just because they've already done it because as we see in the case of Jokic, that doesn't stop them from getting better. It doesn't stop them from doing insane stuff. And I know it's not as new and as exciting as some of the other young guys, like a Shea Gilgis Alexander and Anthony Edwards. What Jokic is doing right now is literally unprecedented stuff. Also really impressive that he's done a lot of it without Jamal Murray, who's missed a good chunk of time. So yeah, just appreciate the greats at any point in their career, whether they're in their early stages, chasing that first championship, chasing more championships, trying to pad their legacies, because you never know what kind of unexpected stuff they're gonna do at any of those stages.